Hi, today we'll look at um, the product and quotient rules. Or derivatives. Um, and let me suppose I have a product, capital F of X is little f of X, little g of X. The way we generally do this, rather than think of it in terms of names, we think of it in terms of a first function multiplied by a second function. And so my derivative in this case would be first times the derivative of the second, which I'm going to write that way, plus the second times the derivative of the first. For our quotient, if I have a division, f of x divided by g of x, again, rather than thinking of this in terms of names, I have a top function and a bottom function, and my derivative is bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. You need to memorize these, know these. They occur often. You have to have them down. Okay? So, let's look at some examples, and I'll leave these up for the moment. Suppose I have f of 2 is equal to 5, f prime at 2 is equal to 3, g of 2 is equal to 7, g prime at 2 is equal to negative 4. Okay, so if I want f g prime at 2, the derivative of the product, it is not the product of the individual derivatives, do not say negative 12, that would be incorrect. We have to follow the product rule given over there. This would be first f of 2 times the derivative of the second g prime of 2 plus the second g of 2 times the derivative of the first f prime at 2 and now I'll put in my numbers. So I get 5 times negative 4 plus 7 times 3, and so I get negative 20 plus 21, which is 1. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. Suppose I have g times f minus g, the derivative of all that, at 2. Okay, and so in this case, the uh, we can do this in steps. F minus g at two would be f of two minus g of two. Addition and subtraction you can just break apart simply like that, and so this becomes. 5 minus 7, which is negative 2. And now I will use the product rule. My product rule first. So let me actually rewrite this. g times f minus g prime at 2 would be first, which is g of 2 times the derivative of the second f minus g prime at 2 plus the second f minus g at 2 um, times the derivative of the first. I forgot to do the other, but all right, we'll get it. g prime of 2. This is my um, functional value at 2. I need the derivative f minus g 
prime at 2. Again, we can just break this apart. This is f prime at 2 minus g prime at 2. f prime at 2 is 3. g prime at 2 is negative 4. And so this value comes out to be 7. Forgot to do the other half. And now we can put in numbers. g of 2 was 7. f minus g prime at 2 we said was 7. Plus f minus g at 2 is negative 2 and g prime at 2 is negative 4. And so I get 49 plus 8 is 57. Okay? Um, let's look at another example here. And suppose I have the following. Let me erase all this. y equals x squared e to the x minus 15 e to the x. And I want to know, find points where the derivative is 0. So, the derivative is 0, means I want to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. The derivative at 0 would mean that I would let x equal 0 after I take the derivative. At and is, two different words, two different things. My derivative, the x squared e to the x, I have to use the product rule on. First times the derivative of the second, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, plus second times the derivative of the first, 2x minus, number stays, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And so we end up with x squared e to the x plus 2x e to the x minus 15 e to the x. And now I want to know where this derivative is 0. Do not put equal 0 here. You, if you do, you're saying that the derivative is always 0. We want my derivative x squared e to the x plus 2x e to the x minus 15 e to the x is equal to 0. This is a function. This is an equation. I want to find the values that make this particular equation true. And to do this, I need to factor. First, I'll factor out the e to the x. Left with x squared plus 2x minus 15. This now factors nicely, fortunately. Um, x plus 5, x minus 3. And then at this point, we have a product equal to 0, which means that each of the individual factors would have to equal 0. The first one is impossible. The exponential function is always positive. It is never 0. The second one gives me x equals negative 5, and the third one gives me x equals 3. So these would be my x values. Notice my original question was find points. So these are the x values. These are not the points. We shouldn't have boxed that in, but oh well. The points. When x is negative 5, if I put that into my function, my y value becomes 25 e to the negative 5 minus 15 e to the negative 5, which is 10 e to the negative 5. And you can leave it like that or use a decimal approximation. I don't care. When x equals 3, I get 9e e cubed minus 15e e cubed. And so that is... Um, negative 6e cubed. These are my points. 